Hello everybody, Landai here. I'm back after, uh, quite a while. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while, but I'm back, um, at least for now. And I'm going to be ranking the Fast and Furious movies. Why, you ask? Because a friend recommended it, the idea. Um, I might be getting back into this YouTube thing, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Don't get too excited yet. But, uh, but yeah, um, so... This video, if you couldn't already tell from this intro, is going to be a bit more unscripted. I'm, you know, just trying this out, see if I can have a little more fun with it. Uh, we'll just, we'll just see how it goes. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't really have much else to say. Fast and Furious is just a fun series. Um, it's not, it's, it's not a masterpiece or anything by any means. But again, it's just fun to watch. I've watched all of them. Uh, 11, including, which does include Hobbs and Shaw. So yes, 11 of them. And, uh, so yeah, I'm going to be ranking them in this video. Alright, right off the bat, getting the worst out of the way first, because that's how a ranking usually goes, I have Fast 9, or F9? I don't know, it just labels F9. But it's, it's just, it's easily the worst in the series for me. I, this was the first I watched in theaters, which I guess is cool, but... The movie itself, it's just crazy. I mean, whether it's the car in space or Carzan, as it has been dubbed, and just all the other ridiculous scenes, pretty much every action scene in this movie is ridiculous. And I mean, of course, it's Fast and Furious, there's going to be ridiculous action scenes, but I'd at least like my action scenes to be ridiculous but also have substance, you know, and, and be ridiculous within a certain bounds. This movie has none of that, and also this the, the story, I, I it's not that great. It was fun to see in theater, but when I rewatched it on my TV, I was just like, yeah, this movie doesn't hold up, so Fast 9, easy worst place for me. Alright, here at number 10, we have Too Fast and Too Furious. Uh, there's no and there, I think it's just Too Fast, Too Furious. Anyway, we have the second movie. And, uh, I know some people really like this one, um, and that's cool and all, but I just never really could get into it. I mean, it just seems so far off and separate from the rest of the movies, in a way, but not in the good way that I'll get to in some later entries. It's just kind of this weird situation where it, it's alright, I guess, in some ways, but other, I just, I don't know, I, it just doesn't really st strike me as being the best. I remember in my when I originally came up with a ranking, this was actually my least favorite. Then I rewatched Fast Nine and was like, oh wait, never mind. That's the worst. But you know, you know, maybe this movie is more than I am uh, giving it credit for. I just I don't know. I'd never really found too much in it. I mean I guess the the car jumping on the boat was cool. But yeah, I guess that that's the only thing I can really remember. So yeah. Alright. Number nine. And this is going to be the fate of the furious. It's a pun. Yes. This movie, it definitely has things working against it, which cause it to be this low. I think that, right off the bat, the absence of Paul Walker really can be felt. It just doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel the same, you know? I feel like he really helped i mean of course he and dom they were the duo that really spawned this entire franchise and well you take paul walker out of it and it just doesn't feel right so right off the bat it feels a little empty in comparison but also i think that this is the point where things really started to get a bit ridiculous with the especially with the whole submarine thing it was fun, don't get me wrong, it wasn't quite Fast 9 level, but we were getting there, and, uh, uh, the whole concept, while cool, I just feel like it could have been executed better, the, you know, Dom being turned against the rest, I don't know, it, this movie just has never really stood out to me as being one of the better ones, it just kind of falls short, in my opinion. I just feel like the post-Furious 7 era of these movies has just kind of been missing an, a piece that really made this chaos work um and i feel like you'll see that with my number eight spot yes that is that is the next number that's the number um before 
before nine, uh, we have Fast X, the most recent of all the Fast and Furious movies, uh, and the second one I've seen in theaters. Um, and this movie, it's fun. It's an improvement over Fast Nine, for sure. And I think because I consider I liked it in so much more than Fast Nine, uh, I rated it a little higher when I was originally c trying to come up with this. Um, ranking, but then I dropped it down a little bit because I just kind of thought about it, and then of course the cliffhanger ending is just a little bogus, if you ask me. But you know, it has aspects that are great. I think easily the best part about this movie is the villain. I forgot his name, but he's awesome. He's basically the most psychopathic psychopath in all of the Fast and Furious movies, and I love it. He's great, and uh, really poses a threat to the main characters. In a way that I just find more entertaining than uh, what's her face and before I, I don't even remember her name, but you know the the one chick, the bad guy. Anyway, it it it's a movie that definitely has its pros, but also has its cons, and it just kind of sits there in my mind as just being a kind of average movie, maybe a little above average. I do enjoy it, um, but again, I think the movies after Furious 7, except for one, which we'll get to later, have just kind of fallen a bit flat and just don't really... It, it really seems like the franchise should have just ended at 7. Moving on to the number 7 spot, we have Fast and Furious. No, not the first one, the fourth one. It's, it, it's not called Fast and Furious 4. Why? I don't know. Uh, these movies, if you couldn't tell, are named the most ridiculous, weird things. Okay, maybe the, maybe not the most ridiculous, but you get what I mean. I mean, too fast, too furious. I mean, who who comes up with these things? Anyway, I'm I'm getting a little sidetracked here. Fast and Furious. Um, it's a pretty solid movie. I can't even really think of something to in the movie itself to really knock it for. I think the big thing about this movie and why it's not any higher is because it's probably one of the more forgettable Fast and Furious movies. I mean, before I rewatched this movie, um, I basically knew nothing about it, even though I'd already watched it before. It just kind of—I kind of forgot what happened. And watching it again, I could see why it—it it has its fun action scenes. It's great, good entertainment, but. I feel like a lot of the Fast and Furious movies have a certain aspect that really sticks out, and this movie just doesn't really have one for me. It's definitely probably what I'd say is the most forgettable of all the Fast and Furious movies, but again, it doesn't really have anything other than the forgettability. It doesn't have anything too bad that makes me want to knock it any further. So, yep, it just sits there right at number 7 spot. Here we are at the number 6 spot, and here I have... Furious 7, the last one with Paul Walker, and like I said earlier, probably should have been the last one. Um, this movie, it's it's just fun. Um, what it does have is Jason Statham. Yes, he is the villain in this, and he's a great villain. Um, maybe still the best villain? I don't know. Fast X's villain is kind of close, but... Shaw, great character. And then, this it does have some memorable moments. I think the big one that comes to mind is the skyscraper jump. Yes, it is absurd, but it's it's still it's still fun. Like it's not so it's not Tarzan level absurd. All right, it's still the fun kind of absurd. And I just think it was a good one. The only issue, I guess, is that it kind of felt like another version of the sixth one in a way that what I mean is it just kind of felt like all right the sixth one kind of created this new formula and this was just copying that formula which would almost identically be copied in the next one also just switching up a little aspect with Dom and so and so forth you can see what I'm saying I feel like this was the first time like when it really kind of just copied a movie before it whereas before this I feel like each movie was had its own separate identity, whereas this was just kind of like Fast 6, Part 2, and so forth. But, you know, still, pretty solid movie, fun watch, uh, and that ending, it, that gets me every time. 
so yeah all right we're breaking into the top five of this list what's five fast and furious movies managed to be better than the six fast and furious movies i've previously mentioned well the first of these is hobbs and shaw believe it or not this was the first fast and furious movie i ever saw pretty crazy i saw this you know in 2019 i believe when it released not in theaters but uh sometime shortly afterwards and i enjoyed it i it was, thought it was pretty good i didn't know what any of the characters were because you know i never watched a fast and furious movie before but i was like all right the rock and jason satham that's pretty cool combo right there um but then re-watching it after watching all the fast and furious movies i was like oh yeah yeah this is this is pretty good it, it's really f a fun movie i'd say it it's not the craziest when it comes to plot and how it fits in to the Fast and Furious lore <laughs> as a whole, but I do enjoy it. It's it's just a fun watch. Um, Idris Elba plays the villain. That's pretty cool also. Um, yeah, just a lot of humor, but also fun action scenes. And being in between Fate of the Furious and Fast 9... It's kind of surrounded by stinkers, but this is a pretty a pretty golden spot in the more recent era of Fast and Furious movies. So, you know, I like it a lot for that. Number four, we have Fast and Furious 6. I had to think about the name for a second because, um, like I mentioned before, the naming of these movies is pretty wacky. Um, Fast and Furious 6, this movie... I think I liked it even more on my second watch. I just love kind of just the, all the different action scenes and how they go from one to the other. Like the scene where dude's in like a, I don't even know what you'd call it, a freaking ramp car? Y you know it if you've seen the movie. You know what I'm talking about. But he's like flipping cars over in the streets and then you've got to battle with a tank and then I believe this also has the... Um, train sequence or was that Fury 7 i don't know but and then it ends off with the plane sequence which is just a really fun ending and oh yeah, again cars versus planes pretty ridiculous but it's funny it's funny and it's fun and it's action-packed and it's fun and funny and fun so fast and Fury 6 is good in my books and also even though all the movies after this has basically just tried to copy this movie's formula this was still technically the first of the formula, so it was pretty fresh at the time. And, yeah, I enjoyed this movie a lot. Bronze Trophy, number three. We have, in fact, the third Fast and Furious movie, Tokyo Drift. I know a lot of people who don't like this movie, and I guess if you're looking at it in terms of how it fits really into Fast and Furious as a whole series... I can see what you're saying, but honestly, I just look at this as kind of a standalone movie that just happens to have the Fast and Furious name in it, but really, if you just watch this, not really thinking about it as a sequel to Fast and Furious, and just more of like a spin-off, kind of like Hobbs and Shaw is, then I think you'll really enjoy it. It takes place in Tokyo, believe it or not, and it has this really cool plot where, you know, main character is, um basically joining up with Han who is one of the best characters in the entire franchise and basically he gets mixed up with the Yakuza and there ends up being a big race in the end for honor and I just think it's a really fun movie and also he drives a Mustang I believe a 67 Mustang in the race and that's like my favorite car so kudos to that but yeah, I just really enjoy this movie. Honestly, I could just watch it again right now. Um, really underrated movie, and I, I enjoy it a lot. Coming in with a silver medal, I have The Fast and The Furious. This is the first Fast and the Furious movie. Not Fast and Furious. This is the first one. And I think it's just a really great movie. It's very different from what the series eventually has become. It was just kind of very low stakes. Um... LA crime grand theft auto kind of street race sort of feel but I think it really pulled it off well I love just the whole you know concept of Paul Walker's character 
kind of being this undercover cop, um, getting involved with this gang of street racers and, well, as we learn, thieves, technically. But I like how he really grows a bond with the group and basically joins them against his own you know, police background. It's just, it's a really good movie, a good story. Um, I'd recommend it. If you've never watched a Fast and Furious movie, I'd say just start with this one, to be honest. It's the first one. I mean, yeah, it's just a good movie. Gets you in the mood for Fast and Furious, even if it is a bit different from the rest of the movies. It is a good one. All right, here we are. Number one. Yes, the golden trophy. The cream of the crop. This is easily the best, I think. Well, maybe not easily, because I do really like um, the prior two I mentioned. But this is my favorite. I'm talking about Fast Five. You could probably guess it. I mean, this is most people's favorite. It is probably just the best made Fast and Furious movie. It perfectly combines the more, like, heisty feel of the first movies with a bit more of the action-packed set pieces of the um, pro the more recent ones, the ones after this movie. And I think it's this great mix, and it just has great action scenes. I love the whole heist plot, and bringing in all these characters from the previous four movies, and basically doing a little, like, stick them all together, you know, like, because, I mean, you got, of course... Dom and Brian and you know all that from the first movie, but then second movie you get uh, Ludacris's character and Roman and then from the third movie you get Han and then fourth movie uh, I think Gal Gadot. Yeah, she's in this movie. Yes, so you like you get characters from all four movies They're all coming together and they really form the family. I know the iconic family and they go and perform a heist in Rio. Great movie, honestly. This this movie is is just one of the great action movies. I feel like like I'm. It's not in my top ten movies or anything, but maybe top twenty five. I do really like this movie, and I like cars and heists, and this combines them. So you know what? It's a gold star in my books. Fast Five. Go check it out if you haven't already. And if you have already, uh, why not check it out again anyway, you know? So, yeah. Alright, there you have it. There's my ranking of the Fast and the Furious movies. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too crazy. Again, there was basically no script for this. I just wrote out on my phone uh, the ranking itself and nothing else. So I'm basically ad-libbing all of this. Uh, so hopefully it's not hot garbage. Um, yes. But, even if it is, thank you all for sticking by to the end and just watching this. I know it has been a while. But yeah, I do plan on getting back into making videos and just kind of making them more like this, if it goes well, of course. Where it's just not as scripted, but just more fun. Just more me train of thought, kind of. And, uh, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the... Uh, making this video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks again and until next time, see ya!